what what are some of the other unintended consequences that might happen as a result of kind of like you said pulling your punches and and trying to protect your staff from from the reality of the situation well i mean the most obvious is just not preparing them uh not getting their minds thinking not preparing them for the reality this is a reality and and whether they want it to be or not it is so you can ignore it all you want but it doesn't make it go away and if you're not prepared for it, see, I always say the worst time to create a plan is when you need it. And if they're not preparing for the for the reality of this type of violence, they're not going to have a plan. And they're going to be so shocked and so sensitive. Now, in my program, I, I show in the longer program when I have time, I show some case study videos about uh, different active shooter events and what their motives were. There's three motives. And so I give, uh, you know, an example of all three. Um, and I don't, I, I don't do it to shock them, but I do it to show them the reality of it. And, and it's not, I don't, I don't want to desensitize them. I want them, I want to toughen their skin a little bit because, you know, if, if, if something scares you so badly that you, that you lock up and you can't, your brain freezes and doesn't tell your body to run, hide or fight, that's a bad thing. And the big, biggest part of my program or the biggest difference between my program and, and most is we teach equal parts of mindset and mess and um, method run hide fight is great it was the first version 25 years ago they made it but the first version of anything is never perfect um it, it talks about the physical functionality of survival and that's running hiding fighting that's all that's all body but if your brain is not prepared to tell your body to run hide fight because, you know, we've got those three F's in response to violence, um, fight, flight, or freeze. And freeze is absolutely unacceptable. Nothing good can come of freezing. You, you, you might as well just say, hey, here I am, shoot me, I'm, I'm ready to go. And that's not okay. I don't, you know, I tell my students, I, I literally say, I forbid you from freezing. <laughs> you know, not that I have any power over them, but there are certain personality types that will remember in that situation. Well, Mike said he forbids me, so... I guess I'll just not freeze and I'll do something. And something is better than anything most of the time in a situation like this. So just to make sure I have this straight then. So the kind of kind of the first iteration, and I've heard this a million times from any kind of articles on this topic, is it's like you said, the first iteration, run, hide, fight, at that that's being taught. And big part of what your training is, is you know, uh, kind of runs counter to it's it's an improvement on some of that stuff that has been been taught before can you can you tell me a little a few more details about um how your training and how your approach kind of differs from from what's generally taught sure uh, we we refer to alive as uh, run hide fight 2.0 it's the new and improved new and improved version so as i said run hide fight is all physical what what we have to do Many people in a situation like this, they see people dying, they, they go, that guy has a gun, he's shooting, I have nothing to defend myself. And they just, they, they surrender into this victim-like mindset. They say, well, there's no way I can survive this, so I just, I guess I'll die. And, and that's, un, that, that's unacceptable. Um, you have a choice and you have the power to change the outcome if you decide to do so. Um, it doesn't mean it's not a guarantee you're going to survive, but your chances are a hell of a lot better of surviving if you fight back. Um, and, you know, the, so many people just, like I said, they resign, they resign themselves to the fact that they're going to die. Absolutely not. In fact, become the aggressor, lean forward, take action, forward action. You're going to die if you do nothing. There's, you might change, you, you might very well change the outcome. Maybe you'll get wounded, maybe you'll die, but good chance you might overcome the, uh, the aggressor, especially if everybody's working the same way with the same training, the same mindset. You know, if you take, um, if you take 11 people from, uh, that have never played football together and you put them on the line, as opposed to 11 players that play together all the time, the players that play together are always going to be better. And so you need to understand how to do what you need to do. Um, that's why, you know, I've had companies say, hey, well, 
we've got 300 employees, but we'd like you to come in and train our executive staff. And I say, so are the lives of your line workers not as important as your executive staff? What happens if one of your, um, you know, executives is somewhere and there's a bunch of line workers there and they don't have the training? Now it's chaos. Everybody needs to learn, drill, practice, train uh, together in the same way. 